Hello interwebs, welcome back to Last Bastion Labs, your safe space for makers. I'm Tim, and this week we're continuing our series of Bolt-On Love. If you happen to watch the last video where we made a set of custom copper jaws for our vise, you'll remember that I mentioned that a set of blue oxide screws would really set off this vise. Now, are custom screws necessary to the form and function of the vise? No, it's not like I'm going to have a bunch of road scholars in my shop looking at my vise going oogity boogity boogity. Today's objective is making screws. In a future video, I have some 1911 grips that I'm going to be doing and I will need some specialized screws for that application. So this is when we would normally move over to the lathe to start our work. Now, you cannot swing a dead cat on the interwebs without running into another thread cutting video. So I was setting up for yet another thread cutting video when the good idea fairy whispered into my ear, why not make the screws on the Tormach? Okay, on to master diabolical plan or MDP number two. Let's chuck the stock up in a 5C collet block. I really should insert the clown music. Do 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 do. Now, in order for this to work, we have to make sure that the collet block is really, really tight. Now, on to the Tormach, we must go. So, one of my sanity checks is to bring the tool down to the lowest level that it will cut and then go to G0, Z0 to verify that the height is correct. And cycle start. Well, that didn't capture my design intent at all. I hate the good idea, fairy. So at this point, I resisted the urge of stopping all work and just starting to drink scotch and came up with a better idea. So I rousted my eight-year-old daughter out of the rack so she could come to daddy's shop and tighten up his collets. She was less than impressed. So here I'm running a four flute quarter inch end mill from Lakeshore Carbide at 7,500 RPM, 54 inches per minute at 2 thou feed per tooth. My width of cup is 15,000 and 270,000 depth of cut. And I'm leaving 2 thou of radial stock. Now a quick 2D contour so that we can bring the part to final dimensions. For the thread cutting, I'm using a 3 8 4 flute thread cutter that I've found on Amazon. My speed is 7,500 RPM at 30 inches per minute and 1,000 feed per tooth. Now John Saunders at NYC CNC has a great video on cutting internal and external threads and a spreadsheet that can help you with all the setups for the parameters based on the major and minor diameters. I failed to mention that I'm using English settings to make a six millimeter screw. It's little things like this that warm my evil heart. Right now I'm running a spring pass just to clean up the threads. Now it's time for a quick chamfer to clean up the edge and the click spring dismount. And through the miracle of YouTube time, we are done. Now onto the lathe for parting off. If you were wondering what you could get me for Christmas, a slitting saw would be nice. Nothing says I'm thinking of you better than an arbored spinny wheel of death. Some of the really cool kids on YouTube have some phrase or saying they say when the part actually separates from the stock. But I'm not that cool. I'm always just happy it's over. So it's back into the collet block with a 6 millimeter collet chuck for the facing and slotting operations. And I left one thou depth of cut just so I could come back with the fly cutter and clean it up. 
And now for the slotting operation. And yes, in case you were wondering, a rotary brooch is on my Christmas list. And last but not least, a quick chamfer to make the part look really cool. I'm not entirely unpleased. Off camera I buffed these out using Blue Magic and was very pleased with the surface finish. One tip when polishing screws don't look at them under magnification or you'll be doing it till Christmas. But hey at least by then you'll know what to get me. Before we bust out the torch to burn down the house, I mean heat up the screws to a blue finish, we need to make a bluing tray. The primary mission of a bluing tray is to help ensure that we have an even heat distribution over the part. Um, that doesn't look right. Better stop. I always try to make it a point to know exactly where my tool is going to enter the work. In this case, it should have been close to center, but as you can tell, it was off to the side. Come to find out, I had the wrong work origin placed on the part. I'm sure that a few of you are questioning my setup at this point, as you should. I love my midi bite vise, and I wanted to test to see if the teeth would be sufficient to hold this part. When I downloaded this recipe from Proven Cut, I was kind of scratching my head going, wow, this is going to be interesting. And it did not disappoint. Look at those chips fly. That's 9,000 RPM at 99.9 .9 inches per minute and almost 4 thou feed per tooth. And wow, were those chips hot. And yep, that dog ain't gonna hunt. By the way, don't try this at home. Try this at your friend's house. And continuing with our series on what not to do, I've placed a parallel in the center of the part. I know that this setup is somewhat questionable and I might go to Machinist Hell for it, but it did get the job done. What is Machinist Hell anyway? Feel free to comment on what you feel is your version of Machinist Hell. And there you have it, one bluing tray complete. I let the parts soak for about 30 minutes in an ultrasonic cleaner. Now it's time to burn my fingers. For those of you who are familiar with this process, you may be wondering where the chips are. We'll get to that in the lessons learned. Here again, 
I'm not entirely unpleased with how this turned out. This was my first attempt, and I'll have to tell you a lot of learning did occur. First, I would highly recommend it if you're doing this process to do it in better light than I had in my garage. Outside bright lights will help you determine when that color is going to change because when it changes, it changes right now. Two, if your chips were made using cutting fluid, you're going to want to wash the chips. It was a rather cool cinematic effect when the cutting fluid finally caught on fire and engulfed my part and tray in flames. However, it made it very difficult for me to determine when the color was actually changing on the part, thus not capturing my design intent at all. Lastly, using a steel rod on your bluing tray will allow you to develop that color code that you need. Your part will move from that straw color to the purple to the dark blue to do over. So not your everyday screw making video. I think I preferred the CNC mill method over the lathe method and I think it was faster. Maybe somebody from YouTube will challenge me to a screw off but I'll have to warn you my Navy chief will tell you that nobody screws off better than I do and the wife unit would agree with him. So that pretty much wraps it up. As always I'd like to thank you very much for your time. If you enjoyed what you saw please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. I'm Tim from Last Bastion Labs, your safe space for makers.